So let's take a quick example of the dynamic form I'm going to show you how to create in this video. This is a job role that someone can apply for. And as you can see, all the relevant details are there. But what I want is I want to have the ability to allow someone to upload their own resume or CV for that job. Now that's all pretty simple and straightforward. But we also need to make sure we transition information about the link to the actual page itself, the title of the job and so on. So this is where we're going to pull in the dynamic data into the form element. So now we've seen how this works. Let's go and create it. So here's the template for the job role itself. I've got a placeholder ready to put in my content, for my form. So we'll select that block and we're going to come over and add in a form element. I'm going to add this one in. Now, this is a standard form that's part of Bricks itself. You can ignore the other ones. These are other plugins I've got installed. Okay, so there's our form. Let's select it. Let's get rid of the message. We don't want that on there. And let's rename this. So we need to do a couple of things. First of all, name is perfectly fine. And also the email is perfectly fine. We can leave those as they are. What we also need to do now is add a file upload. So we'll add a new field in. We'll change this to files. We'll call this resume or CV, whatever you want to call it. We're going to set the max number of files to be one. We're going to set the max file size to 10 megabytes. So we've got some headroom for anybody. And then you can choose whether you want to save the file to the media library or into a custom directory. Now, for this example, I'm going to say the media library. If you wanted a little bit more sort of control over all of these aspects, you may want to take a look at the custom directory. We'll save it in the media library though for now. And then you'll notice it gives us a little warning, which thankfully it does. And we're going to limit the file types that we allow people to upload. And we're going to say we only want to allow a PDF. But you could expand this if you wanted to, to doc files, those kinds of things. While we're at it, let's quickly style that file field. So we'll just set our typography. We'll set this to be white in this example or close to white. We'll set our font size. Now, I'm not using a framework here, but if I was, then I'd, I'd be using that to scale my values. But for this, we're going to say 1.8 rem. We'll set this to be capitalized and we'll set our font size to be 600 so it stands out. And then finally, we'll just pop a different background in. Stick it with our brand colors. Let's go for something like this. Now, this is where the fun things start. We want to transition over, like I say, some information about this particular content. Because it's dynamically generated, we don't know what it's going to be. So this example, our sample, is an advertising executive, but it could be a social media marketing, whatever. It also makes sense that we pass over the URL for the page so anybody receiving the email, for example, in the HR department in this example, they could just click and immediately go and see exactly what role it is and what page this advert comes from. To do that is actually really simple. And once you know this, you can do an awful lot with the content on your page that gets passed over via your form, but no one actually sees. So we'll add a field, we'll change the type, and we're going to set this to be a hidden field. While it's hidden, it's still part of our form. So we can still assign variables and we can still assign dynamic data and things to it. So for this example, we're just going to put in the URL. We click the lightning bolt then for the value. And from there, we're going to say the post link. That's it. That's all there is to it. We'll do the same again now. So we'll add another field in. Again, we're going to set this to be hidden. We'll put title, set our value. And we're going to put this as the post title. So now we pass over both the URL and the actual job role title, but they're in hidden fields. So they'll only be seen inside the email that gets sent to HR. Also, while we're here, let's do a little bit of styling. Let's change our placeholder typography. Again, we'll set this to be something like, for this example, 1.6 rem. And we'll make it a little darker because it's a little bit difficult to see. So if we come down, we can control the submit button. We can choose what action or actions happen when the form is submitted. And we can control the settings for any of those actions. So first thing, let's just control our submit button and make that stand out. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this from send to submit your resume. Size, we'll set this to be medium, so it's a little bit more in your face. Change our style from primary. So for example, we may want to set the background and we'll say we want this to be red so it stands right out, people can't miss it. We'll set our typography, set our color to be white. Set our size, keep consistent styling and font weight. There we go. So we now have our submit resume button. So then you've got your action. What happens when someone clicks that submit button? 
Well, we want this to be sending an email. And you can see if we click inside here, we can choose other things like custom, redirect, and so on. So you can have multiple different actions applied. So what you may want to do is have this submit an email and then redirect to a thank you or success page. That would make a lot of sense. I'm not going to do it in this example because I think it's pretty simple and self-explanatory. You just choose the redirect option and choose the link where you want to send them to. Just for ease, though, I'm going to remove that and concentrate solely on the email option. Then we've got a success message. So if you're not using that redirect page, you've got a success message here that actually pops up after successful submission on the form. So let's change that to make something a bit more sense. And there we go. So we've got a success message. Then we can drop down to the email. Now this is where a little bit of the magic actually starts. It's very simple to create a form that sends things over, but we want to grab dynamic information and use that in our form. So first of all, let's change the subject. So we'll pop in application submission four. Now, we want to reference some dynamic information. So all we need to do, pop a space in, click our little dynamic data option, and pop in the post title. So this is now going to say application submission four, advertising executive. Again, makes a lot of sense. Then you can choose who you want to send the email to. That's fine in this example, but you could set this up in other ways if you wanted to as well. Then we've got things like the from email. Now, you may think we can click on the dynamic data and we can just reference things from our form. Sadly, that doesn't actually happen. If we open this up, there's nothing inside you for our form. Just all our standard things like, you know, your URLs and things like that. So we can't use that. So what can we do? It's very easy. So the from email address, we're going to come back up to our fields. So there's our email. What we are interested in is this ID at the bottom. Every single form element that you create will have a unique ID associated with it. And we can use those IDs to pass data to our email. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that. We're going to come right the way down to our email and open that back up. And then a from email address, we're going to put in two curly braces. We're going to pop in that ID. And then we're going to close those two curly braces. So what this is doing is this is passing that variable from our email address in our form and then using that as the from email address. Hope that makes sense. Then we can say the from name. So what we can do is we can just get rid of this and do the same again. Two curly brackets. We'll scroll back up to our fields, open up our name, and from there, grab the unique ID. So we'll copy that, come back down, open up email, do the same thing again. Paste that inside there, close it with two curly brackets. It couldn't get much simpler. So you can say, we'll copy this from email address, and we put that into reply to email address, because obviously you want to reply back, you want to reply it to the person that sent this in the first place. Okay, so that's pretty simple and straightforward. Then we've got the email content. Well, we want to pass all this information, including the files attached and so on. So what we're going to do is, again, two curly braces, and from there, we're going to put all underscore fields and close those curly braces. And this is going to grab all of the fields, including those hidden fields, from our form and then send those via our email. Again, pretty simple. You can drop in a error message if you want to, and you can also set up a HTML email, whether you want to have this as HTML, if you want to pass that kind of info, or just keep it as a plain text email. Up to you. And then if you wanted to, you could set up a confirmation email, and this would send that information over to the person that submitted it. So again, you could use the same principles here, fill out the subject, which would be, thank you for submitting on the adv advertising executive using that dynamic data, the send to email address, the from email address, all those things could be put into you. And then a copy would be sent over to the person that's actually submitted their resume or CV. I'm not going to do that, but the process is exactly the same as I've just shown you for the email. So now we have everything in place. Let's save this. Let's test it out on the front end. So you see, there's our social media planner this time. So let's pop in my name, an email address, and we say choose files. And then I'm going to grab that PDF. So it doesn't really matter which one. We'll grab a PDF, pop that in there, and then we'll submit our resume. After a couple of seconds, thank you for submitting your resume. We'll be in touch shortly, our custom message. Or like I say, you'd probably want to send this over to a thank you page that just has a little bit more professionalism associated with it. So that's how that all works. Let's check our emails now to see if that's come through and how it's come through. And there we go. There's our email. You can see it's come from Paul. The email address, the URL that'll take us back to the job role, the title of the role. So those two are our hidden fields. There's our attachment, and everything is working the way you'd expect. So if we click on the link, 
that takes us back over to the social media planner so we can just confirm exactly what role it is. So if you're sending this over to someone in HR that may not be keeping up to speed with what you're doing on your website, at least they can see exactly where this has come from. Now that's a pretty simple example of using dynamic data. And if you want to learn more about working with bricks and forms and all those kinds of good things, check out this playlist next. Oh, 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 oh,